we're going to talk a lot about process and routine in this DVD series and I want to describe what that is. The routine that we're going to do is, is the steps that prepare you to hit a golf shot and the process is the steps that lead up to you hitting that golf shot and we don't want those steps interrupted in any way. Now I'm going to describe my routine here. It's important that you have a routine with every club in your bag, whether it's the same routine or not. I have the same routine with my wedge as I do with my putter or my driver. I try not to vary it. But some people have a putting routine, some people have a driving routine. It really doesn't matter. What does matter is that you have a process that you go through with no interrupted thoughts than that routine that leads you up to hitting the shot that you want to hit. I'm going to describe my routine here. Now you may want to copy my routine, that's fine, but find someone that you like, a tour player, your club champion, or someone that you look up to golf-wise and follow their routine. I promise you, when you do these steps regularly, you're going to see more consistency throughout your game. Now, first step of my routine is I stand back behind the ball, and when I do that, I visualize the shot I want to hit. So I'm going to try to hit a low draw here to a back pin. So I'm actually seeing the ball draw back to that pin. Then I step up to the shot. I feel the shot that I want to hit. And then I simply do it. So that's my routine I do with every one of my clubs in my bag. Anything that interrupts that process or that routine, a bird chirping, someone moving in the gallery, I will back away and start all over again. I don't want any interrupted thoughts in my routine and process. Do this and you'll find very consistent results in your golf game. What we're going to do now is we're going to give you a good example of how to find your average distance with each one of your clubs then you'll be able to practice it the way that we're going to describe later. I've got here is my 58 degree, which is my highest lofted wedge, and I'm just going to hit balls out into the field. I'm not going to swing with all of my power. I'm just going to try to repeat each swing and swing about 85%, and then we're going to go take a look at where the balls are. Again, I can hit that ball probably 15 yards further, but I'm not concerned with that. I'm concerned with trying to repeat the shot. Okay, now we've just hit the 10th ball, and what we're going to do is we're going to step this off. Now, if you have a laser product, you can do that as well, but you're going to go find the average of those 10 balls. You'll see a clear pattern develop, and what we're going to do is find the ideal number for each one of your wedges, and then we're going to teach you how to practice them. 81, 82, 83, 84, 85. Would you say this looks like about the average here, Doc? Definitely. 85 yards. So now, I have 85 yards as my number with that club. And now we got to go about setting, uh, you know, practicing, getting good with that number. Yeah, and now we make a commitment day after day, week after week, month after month, year after year, that we're going to practice these drills until we bring in that dispersion pattern so we can go on a golf course or into a tournament and know exactly how far we're going to hit it. And it takes out all of the worry, all of the concern. And over time, you really get those distances dialed in with each club and become very good at knowing, which allows you to get in a tournament and have the pin, the pin tucked just over a front bunker and have no worry of it coming up short because it's 85 yards to the pin and you know it's 80 to the front edge of the green and 78 to carry the bunker and you have nothing to worry about or fear and part of the mental game is eliminating doubt by the thoroughness of your preparation and it's the same way if you have a back bunker and you know what distance it is to a you know a crest in a green or the back edge of the green and the pin and you don't have to worry about hitting it over the green and that's where you know you put in the preparation time and it's a lot easier to have your mind clear and trusting when you get in a tournament yeah and, and you know don't get caught up in in trying to force numbers to happen if, if your number is 85 whatever and you've got 88 to a pin or even 82 feel comfortable with that 85 and know you can do it and it gives you a lot of confidence yeah you start to see that it's not an accident when you see good players hit it the distance that the pin is at on a regular basis. 
it's something that they've trained themselves to do through practice. There's, it's very predictable. It's under their control. They, they know what they're doing when they get out there. And, and you know, it, it, it doesn't matter the yardage. I don't care if you hit your sandwich 50 yards. Whatever the number is, find it, and then we're going to show you a few drills that will help you get really good at it. This is the bunker drill. What I've done here is I've lasered the face of this bunker from my distance back there. It's 85 yards. We hit some balls into the bunker, tried to hit it the exact distance. The reason why this is good is the sand shows you exactly where the ball landed. It really shows you your distance control and if you hit that ball the right distance. The other reason why this is good is it is hard to find a place to practice your wedges. Well, the bunker, every place has a bunker, your driving range, your golf course. And when you're out playing by yourself, if you have a laser or step off the yardage, hit some balls into the face of a bunker and it'll show you exactly how far you're hitting it. Do that and your scoring clubs will improve. Now what we're going to do here is we're going to kind of combine two drills. This is the call shot drill that, that we've talked about where Tom Kite was really good at practicing his feel. He hits the shot, calls the number out, and you have a partner down there that's going to call out the number that it actually lands. Now that's the call shot drill. That's great to do with a buddy. We also have the towel drill. You're going to see towels as targets. Uh, you can use towels, you can use range buckets, golf carts, uh, your bag, your shag bag, anything to give you something to shoot at. It doesn't necessarily have to be a pin on a golf course. But what I'm going to do now is I'm going to try to hit this ball 85 yards. Dr. Rotel is out there 85 yards and I'm going to hit the shot, call out the number, and he's going to let me know what it actually went. It's a great way to sharpen your feel. Eighty-three. Eighty-four. Eighty-five. Eighty-two. Eighty-four. Eighty-four. Great way to refine your feel. Work on it and you'll see your scores drop with your scoring clubs. The next four of the ten shots that we're going to talk about involve being 20 yards and to the green side. They involve pitching, chipping, the lob shot, and the bunker shot. So let's talk about each of those. Well, first of all, what we know is a tour player is going to miss six greens every day they play on average. If you are a higher handicap player, you're going to miss a lot more than that. If you're a 15 handicapper, you may be missing 12, 13 greens a day. So it means this part of the game is even more important to you than it is to a tour player. So it's something that you want to put a lot of time into. We, we really don't need to worry about from the 20 yard area to the 60 or 40 yard area. I mean, that area, if you're competent here and competent with your, your scoring clubs, with your distances, I mean, this is really, really important. Yeah, I'd get 20. great at 20 yards and in and from your three-quarter lob wedge back and leave those 30, 40, 50-yard shots out until you get great with this stuff. You're going to have so many more of these. And, and really, when you rank them, don't you? you we rank them as ch uh, pitching is number one. You're going to have the most of those, aren't you? Yeah, what happens is when you study it is there's a lot of days where you might have six pitch shots when you miss a green but no bunker shots and no lob shots. You'd hardly ever have a day where you might hit seven bunkers and have no pitches. So if I was going to rank order them, I'd say pitching should be the single most important shot. What's happened in recent years is the turf has gotten tighter, the greens have gotten more elevated, they've gotten firmer, and the ball's gotten harder. And it's caused a lot of people to start worrying about contact or about sculling or chunking. And so it's a skill you really want to get competent and then get confident at. And when I say confident, we mean we want to get to the point where we just see where we want it to go and hit it and it goes there. Right. It's that easy. Yeah. And, and when, you're, when you're playing, it's great once you do some drills and games and have fun with it. Uh, you, you really are just pretending you're doing the drill when you're playing for that $2 Nassau or coming down the stretch of your member guest or, or trying to win a U.S. Open. You're really just having fun and trusting the, the pre preparation that you've done. 
Yeah, and you know, a lot of people will ask, what club should I hit from here? You know, should I use my lob wedge, my sand wedge, my pitching wedge? And I'd say, well, tour players, it's all over the gap. You know, I mean, it's, it's amazing the variety of clubs that tour players use. So what I tell people, whatever club you can see in your mind and whatever club you feel good with is good by me. And I don't care if you decide to just fall in love with one club yeah. and use that all the time, because in your mind that seems easier, or if you make the same length swing and change clubs for different distances. But you've got to have a method that you do that you feel really good about. And it's okay to start out if you're not real, you know, sure about the the technique or whatever involved. Is start out with good lies. It's okay, but eventually as we get more competent, we want to move around and then our focus becomes trying to hold the shot instead of just trying to get it close because the difference in a 2-foot putt versus a 6-foot putt is huge. You know, I always have my students rank order these shots from from best to worst and a lot of times people will say oh my best shot is a chip shot my worst is a pitch and I say well that's a real problem you know if you're not a good chipper of the ball you can always putt it or bump a fairway with there's a lot of strategic options but you have to be able to hit a pitch shot you know if you've got to hit it over a bunker to a near pin you've got to know that you can nip that ball and throw it up in the air in terms of how to think about these shots a lot of people ask me that I would say with good players, there's only a few options. They either just look at their target, what I call see it and hit it. Some people will see a trajectory and hit it. Right. Some people will see a spot on the green and the way their mind works is if I land it on that spot, the ball will roll the cup. And some people will see a trajectory and a spot. Yeah. Decide which is most comfortable for you. And it may take a while to figure out what's most comfortable, but eventually you got to get to the point in a tournament where that's all that's going on in your mind so that you can get to the short game area when you miss a green. Instead of being worried and uptight, you're starting to grin like, oh, this is where I show off for the whole world how good I am. You know, this is where I kick butt. I mean, you've yeah. been there. You know what I'm talking about. Exactly. And you're going to have these shots. And, and like you said, you can, you can play around with the chipping, and, and, but you're going to have to pitch a ball and we're going to give you some basic techniques of how to do it but it's really really simple now we're going to show you a few simple fundamentals for your pitching and then we're going to show you some drills and games you're going to have some fun and lower your scores okay now the fundamentals of pitching are really simple and I'm going to keep this short if you have any questions with these you ought to find a local PGA pro get him to help you out but really it starts with the bounce of the club a sand wedge is designed with bounce for a reason and that's so that the club bounces off the ground rather than digs in pros know how to use that and once you find that it's really simple and your pitching will improve what I see with most amateurs is the club is too square and it digs into the ground and you lose your ball contact really it's hard to control your distance and your trajectory, which is the key things to pitching. The other fundamental that's very important is where you place the ball in your stance. To hit a ball high, you want the ball more forward. To hit a ball lower that runs more, you want to put it further back. One great way to find out about your bounce is to use your, your right hand if you're right-handed, your left hand if you're left-handed. And all you really want to do is hit some shots with one hand only. And don't let this angle change here. Just keep turning and you just let the club keep this angle. For a left-hander, it would be keeping this angle. Very important. Once you figure that out, your pitching will, will really take off. You'll be able to control your trajectory. Here we are. We're doing it, demonstrating a pitch. Now this is ah, 15 steps off the green. And this is a part of the game we get a lot where, you know, a par five where you hadn't quite hit it in two. And it's really an important part of the game is we don't want to practice just the chipping. So what do you think about when you have a pitch like this? Well, when I got a pitch like this, you know, I'm really trying to figure out how, how it's going to spin around the greens. And, and, you know, I think a lot of amateurs come in, they try to make their chipping the same way as their regular game. So they're taking it inside and trying to turn it over. Right. And, you yeah. know, so what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to feel for a spot and try to land something on the green as fast as I can and right. let it run out to the hole. Okay, so you're looking at a spot there that you're trying to fly it to. Hopefully. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Here we go. And, and you set up, is there weight, more weight on the left or? Uh, for me, it's more weight on the left and I, I'm really trying to use a lot of my left hand to pull through it. So okay. I, don't, I don't ever want this club 
to rotate, Ro like a, rolling yeah. over, like okay. like as a, a driver or something okay. or something like that. So a little more weight on your left side. A little more weight, and I kind of open it up just a little bit. And yep. You know, not nothing where it's like a like a bunker or anything like that, but just kind of moving the shaft a little bit back for me. Okay. And using it, going a little bit, like I said, pulling down with my left hand. Beautiful. All right, let's try one more. <laughs> and this time, what, uh, if you're going to add it loft, how would you add loft? Do you just open the face? I would just open the face a little bit and actually move. For me, this is something that I do, is just move the shaft back. So okay, instead so of you, move the, you don't open the face so much, you're moving the shaft angle Right, back. I'm moving the face angle to go okay. back more this way. So basically what I'm trying to do is take angles out of it. You okay. know, if you open the face, it starts aiming right. Yep. So what I'll do is move it back this way, actually lay it open this way. Beautiful. Look at that. That's got a lot of spin on it. That's a fast green. Beautiful. All right. Well, thanks for helping out, Jason. My pleasure. Thank you, sir. All right. You got it. One of the things that I find quite frequently with players when they first come to me is a lot of players will have a really, really good mental and physical routine with their putting, but when they get to pitching or chipping or bunker play, it's like it's never crossed their mind that they ought to have a routine, and they have a lot of wandering and wavering with that part of their game. So I really want you to get a routine. I don't care if it's seeing your shot and doing it, or seeing it and feeling it and doing it. I don't care if you want to take one practice swing every time, or you'll see a lot of players take two practice swings every time, but you want to get a routine that feels good to you that you can commit to, and a lot of times the easiest way is to find a tour player who you really like their short game or you really like their routine and copy their short game routine. But you got to get one and you got to commit to it and you got to be able to repeat it under pressure because a routine and a mental process is what allows us to perform under pressure without getting distracted by thoughts of chunking it or sculling it or hitting it thin, or leaving it short, or running it past the hole or something uh, of that kind. But those are just all mental distractions. The routine and the discipline mentally of the routine is what allows us to get past all of those kinds of distractions when we're on the golf course. Okay, the first drill we're going to learn is the elevator drill. This drill is all about trajectory control, which is one of the keys to pitching. You ought to be able to hit a shot high, hit a shot medium, hit a shot low. The reason why we call it the elevator drill is it's like floors of an elevator. On your drill chart, you'll see, based on your handicap level, the different floors that you should be able to hit. So what we're going to do is I'm going to hit the first one down. Now to do that, again, the ball a little more back. So this is a low running pitch a little low and it runs right to the hole so that ball is going to roll more than the others now we're going to go up a little bit higher and we're in the same spot now we're not moving so we're going to go to the next floor on the elevator a little bit higher than that last one so there we go a little bit higher and now lastly we're going to hit the highest one which is the last floor of the elevator ball more forward this time face a little more open and there's the last one of the elevator up very high. You do this drill and based on your handicap level in the chart, learn to control your floors and your trajectory. Your pitching will improve. Okay, now this drill is called the towel drill. This is a, a great drill for your pitching. It doesn't have to be a towel. I'm going to call it a towel drill, but it can be a, a basket, a range basket, a shag bag. It can even be another golf ball. You can have a competition with your friends. You're trying to land the ball on that spot and then let it run to the hole. It's a very challenging drill, but once you learn your trajectory control with the elevator drill, if you can control your distance on top of that, your pitching really will get sharp. So what I'm going to do is just try to land this ball right on that towel up there. Oh, I hit that one a little hard. And I'll get another shot at it. The key is distance. You want to land the ball the right distance. You do that enough times, your pitching really will get sharp and your scores will drop.
Okay, now we get to the scariest place for most amateurs, what we call the cat box. It's also the bunker. Pros love the bunkers for one simple reason. You don't have to hit the golf ball. There's a lot of room for error here. I'm going to show you a couple of things and it will really help your bunker game to understand bounce. Most amateurs when they get in, they, they hit the sand with this part of the club so it digs into the sand. You cannot do that. Bunker shot is like skipping a rock across the lake. You want to skip the back of your sand wedge along the sand. And remember, we're not hitting the ball here. That's why pros love it. I think probably the worst area I've seen for most, uh, most of the amateurs I play with is in bunkers. Yeah. Around greens. Right. They're, you can see they're petrified to go in there. Yeah. And when, they, when you're afraid of a shot in golf, it's, it's probably shows. not going to pull off too well. So we hit enough practice shots so that we're not afraid of it. And that way that takes out that one element when we get in the bunker. And you can see us usually play pretty good bunker shots. Yep. Two simple things to remember when you're hitting a bunker shot. You want to act like you have a ball in your hand and you're just going to throw it out, kind of skipping the sand as you do with your right hand if you're right-handed, with your left hand if you're left-handed. You want to feel like you're skipping with that lead hand. Again, using the back of the sand wedge to hit the sand. You can hear the sound of a good bunker shot. It makes a real loud thump. It's because you're, you're actually thumping the back of the sand with the blade, with the bounce. It's not digging in. And that is the key to a good bunker shot. One good way to practice. Now, this is going to be tough for you higher handicappers at first. But as you get a little more accomplished at it, you'll find it easier and your bunker game will improve. I want you to try to hit a few with one hand. It's going to be tough at first. I'm not, I'm not uh, going to lie to you about that. But if you can, you try to get your weight a little more on your front foot, just a little bit more. And I'm going to hit with just one hand. I do this a lot. You'll see a lot of pros do it. I'm going to actually hit the bunker shot with my right hand. Here we are uh, in the cat box, as we call it, the bunker. I know it gives amateurs fits, Padraig, so uh, hopefully we're going to give them a few things that they'll be able to, to use to help them get the ball out of the bunker. So talk to us about what you do when you're faced with a shot like this in a bunker. Well, at, at my level now, at this stage, I'm, I'm just picking my target and, and focusing on that and, and assuming that all my work and practice in the past has got me to be able to hit that shot. Right. Uh, so it depends. When I'm on the course, it's only target. Right. If I'm on the practice ground, I, I might hit a few shots warming up, especially warming up, making sure that my technique is right, making sure that my, my setup is right. But after that then, you know, that might be 10, 15 shots and then back into focusing on the target. Okay. So I, I would ensure that I do at least, probably in a ratio of twos to one, mental to, to physical practice. Okay, technical all right, that's practice. very important. Okay, and, and talk about bounce on the sand wedge and how that's important in getting the ball, because we're not actually hitting the ball in a bunker, no, are we? it's the one time in golf you don't have to hit the golf ball. And, right. and it, believe it or not, it has the most room for error in the game. That's why we love this shot. Yeah. You yeah. can hit within, you know, maybe one to three inches and get the exact same result. If you hit behind the ball one to three inches, the ball will actually finish the same place. So it's, 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 it's got room for error. Okay, well talk, talk us through it as you set up, yeah. just kind of what you do to prepare for the shot. Well, technically for me, the most important thing in a bunker shot is that my sternum, which is my center of gravity, is on the ball or to the left-hand side of the ball. Poor bunker players tend to get the sternum or their weight going backwards through impact as they try and lift it. So I'd be back here. Right. And that's why they tend to hit back here and take a lot of sand. A lot of sand. Difficult. Yep. A good professional, he either moves in there or sets himself in the left-hand side and stays there. So he's taking very little sand. It's more, it's more of a sliver of sand than a big heap right, of sand. Like a cushion. Up. Like yeah. you want the divot to kind of look like a football, kind of. Yeah. Yeah. yeah exactly. So. And it, it, it really is a light amount of sand. Perfect. And as long as you can really get it, rather than a big. Perfect. All right. Now, now you're under pressure here. Let's yes. see if you can hold this one out here. Okay. Standard bunker shot. Beautiful technique here. Very nice. And you control the spin so nicely there. So, the, and if you if we we'll look at the divot, it looks like a football. You yeah. use the bounce. That's going to help anybody out of the bunker. Well, I, I, yeah. If you can if you can get this to to hit into the sand, as long as you're staying forward when you're doing it, yep, you're always going to get the ball going up. Okay. Let's try one more. Another perfect lie here. Oh yes. Under pressure. Never get these in the All tournament. Right. <laughs> yeah, you never get the good ones in a tournament. Okay, we'll go a little higher this time. Okay. 
So, so I, we're not going to change anything. It looks like you open the face a little bit. I open the face, and, and as the face opens, I open a little bit. Okay, So I'd be squarer, and now I'm opening up. So I'm going a bit higher. Beautiful. Beautiful shot. Oh, oh almost in. I think I got a bit of a pitch Beautiful. mark there. Perfect. Well, thanks, Padraig, for helping Thank out. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. The ladder drill is a game of creativity. When you're in the bunker, we want you going up and down the ladder in your mind as well as with the ball. This game applies distance control. What we're going to do is we're going to hit one ball and then hit the next one a little bit further than that and then the next one even further than that. Hence, we're going to different rungs of a ladder. Challenge yourself. See how many balls you can get between you and the, and the hole and then come back. Have fun. Bet with friends. Uh, see how many balls you can do, then see how many your friend can do. Have some fun. The first one is going to go a little bit, just barely out of the bunker. So the first one just barely got out of the bunker. So now I'm going to go to the next rung of the ladder, which is just a little bit further than that. So then just a little further. And now just a little further than that one. So that ball goes past that next one. Now you can do this with as many balls as you want, but go up, go back, have some fun, challenge yourself, and watch your scores drop and that fear disappear from the cat box. Now we're to the lob shot. The lob shot is where we have something between us and the hole, where we got to get the ball in the air, be it a pond, right here is a bunker. You've got to get the ball lofted and stop it quickly. It's a shot that you don't need that often, but it, it's a, a key shot that you, when you do need it, you should know how to do it. And you should practice it a little bit. Uh, again, the lob shot is not very much different than the sand shot or the bunker shot. Most amateurs get in there with two square of face, the only way to use it, have that thing open. The other thing with the fundamental is don't have the ball back. You've got to have it up with an open face. A good little way to practice is have a ball in your hand and throw it up in the air. You want the face to come up to the sky when you hit this shot. When you want to hit it high, put the face to the sky. So it should look something like this. Ball up, here we go, shallow, hit it up in the air, that ball is going to come down soft. Now we need this shot every now and then. It's important to have. Practice it with some of the drills like the elevator drill. Always incorporate some lob shots into your practice. It'll give you some confidence when you face them on the course. Do that and your scores will drop. Now we've reached the area where we're going to chip. We're right up next to the green side. The great thing about this is there's a lot of variety. You know, we were forced to hit it in the air with the lob shot. We were forced to hit the sand out of the bunker. We were forced to get it in the air with the pitch. Now we can keep the ball along the ground. That means we can use a variety of clubs. There's no one right way to do this. So the only, the really only fundamental is keep your wrist very similar to a putting action. You don't want a lot of wrist action with these shots. And the only other thing too is get the ball down on the ground quickly and rolling like a putt. I'm going to hit this shot a couple of different ways for you and just show you the variety for a very simple shot. I use a 54, which is my middle wedge here, and I'm going to hit this like a putt. The ball is just a little back of center. I have my putting grip, and I hit this just like a putt, and I want it to roll out just like that. That was with the sand wedge. Now I'll do one with the pitching wedge. Same thing. The ball just a little back. Again, I just want to get the ball down on the ground. I want to get it rolling to the hole. If you've got a bad lie or you don't feel comfortable, grab your putter. Again, just the ball a little back of center. Hit it just like a putt. Watch the ball roll up to the hole. Beautiful. Use the different variety of these shots. Have some fun practicing these. They're a lot of fun, and I guarantee you, you'll have fun showing your buddies your scorecard as your scores drop. We're here with one of the best chippers on the PGA Tour, Stuart Sink. Wow. Yeah, you are. <laughs> and uh, we've got, we've, we want you to just talk about a little bit about your technique, 
remember we're going to keep it real simple, but just some basic little tips that you can give on chipping. Okay, well, um, chipping and putting, chipping especially, is, is one of those parts of the game of golf that is just so personal. It's so individual, and there's not one way to do it right, and there's not a, a lot of ways to do it wrong, but the key is you have to do it the same way every time. You have right. to really ingrain those, those habits, and uh, also the lies around the greens dictate really what kind of technique you have to use to hit the shots. Yep. So I got two balls sitting right here, and uh, the kind of shot we got right here is uh, it's not a very difficult shot. It's an uphill shot to the green, but uh, in the rough, not too deep. But as you can see here, I got the, the grass on this ball is laying in the direction of the way I'm playing, and the grass on this ball is laying the other way. So the way I always think about these shots, and the only way to really, the only way to uh, to get a feel for this is to practice these shots. Yeah. And that means going on the golf course yeah. and, and playing a lot of golf. And if you're around the chipping green, if you can't get out to the course, then throw a bunch of balls out there and play them where they yeah. land. Right. You know, don't just give yourself a perfect lie every time because exactly. last time I played golf, I didn't get a perfect lie every time. <laughs> That's right. That's you right. Know, we do play on the PGA Tour, but we don't get perfect lies every That's time, right? right? Exactly. <laughs> exactly. So uh, with this shot here, it's not going to offer a whole lot of resistance. And um, I just think it's almost like a, a putting motion. You don't use a whole lot of hands in this type of shot. Real simple there, just like a putting stroke. Very nice. I think he made it. And look at here. He huh? made the first one. Well, that's well, that's pretty an good. easy shot. See? That's an easy shot. Just like a putting Obviously. motion. Yes. But then okay. you get to this ball here, and all of a sudden you've got grass laying into you. Yep. Which is going to create a whole lot more uh, vagueness with the with the way the the ball is going to come out because it could come out really normal or hot, and it could come out fluffy, and it could not even reach the green. So, I think with this kind of shot, it's important to try to keep. Uh, Keep a little steep and keep the club from uh, grabbing a whole lot of grass between the, okay. the ball and the yeah. club at impact. A little more steep on the ball yeah. with a bad lie. Okay. But I think overall, the, the main thing you have to do is keep moving. Keep the club moving, yep. keep your hands moving. Indecision that's created by a lie like this will cause a lot of amateurs to try to help the ball up on the green yep. and decelerate a little bit, and that's what causes bad contact. Uh, yep. So let's see if we can just dig this thing out of here a little bit. I'm going to get a little, maybe a little more forward on it. A little more on your left side, perfect. And there we go, another beautiful chip. That's why he's the best chipper on the PGA Tour. <laughs> Listen to what he says and you'll improve. Thanks, Stuart. All right. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. Another great game to play is horse. It's just like the game in basketball, but the difference here is the person that chips it closest doesn't get a letter. The person that chips it the furthest away does get a letter. So the first one to spell horse loses. Here, Bart, Brian, and I are playing this game, and come to any tour event, you're going to see a lot of different players playing this game. It's a great way to be competitive and really sharpen your short game skills. The sink out game or drill is a great game for getting you into the state of mind where you're always looking for a way to pitch the ball in the hole. So what I want with all of my players is every time they miss a green, instead of being down about missing the green or frustrated or discouraged, as soon as you see that you've missed a green, I want you to immediately start being happy and excited thinking about pitching the ball into the hole. The purpose of this game is to get you really focused in on holding the shot. I have five balls that I need to make at tour level. You can refer to your game chart and see how many you need to hold based on your appropriate handicap level. And the focus is really into your target and your routine when you're doing this. I'm going to do this just like I do on the golf course, and the goal being I'm going to hold the shot. So I've got to hold five shots here, but I, I'm going to describe my routine to you. And I'm going to move around with this game. I'm going to drop balls and move around. That's really important. The way I do it is I'm back here and I see the ball the way I want it to land on the green and I'm, I see the ball rolling and going in the hole. Now I'm going to set up and I'm going to feel the shot and then I'm just going to let it go to my target. So I have my target, no conscious thought there, I'm just letting it go. So once I've hold five balls, I can move to my next game. The Paul Runyon drill is a wonderful game in that it's perfect transfer to the golf course. In other words, when you're on the golf course, you're always pitching a ball 
either in the hole or you pitch it and then you have to putt it. Paul Runyon was famous for his short game. They actually nicknamed him Little Poison because his short game was so sharp. He was one of the best players on the PGA Tour despite being very short off the tee. The purpose of this game is to actually get the ball up and down. We're going to create a real life situation here just like you're going to have on the golf course. Uh, when you get the ball up and down, you actually get zero points. That's like a par. If you hold the shot, that's like a birdie, minus one. If you don't get the ball up and down in two strokes or less, it's like a bogey, so it's plus one. Refer to the score sheet for uh, how you should do it based on your appropriate handicap. Again, I'm going to do my routine just like before, and I'm going to try to hold the shot again, but if I don't, I'm going to go do my routine with my putter and knock the ball in the hole. So we didn't hold that one, but I'm actually going to grab the putter. Now because we didn't hold that chip, it's just like on the golf course for real, I have to go hold this putt. So what I'm going to do, I actually take my glove off on the golf course, so I'm going to do that here. I'm going to create every situation just like when I'm really playing. Fortunately, I've got a short putt to get zero points. This is, would be even par. I'm, again, I'm going to do my routine, see the ball going into the hole, then just let it happen. There we go. I scored zero points here. You keep doing this game, you'll be getting the ball up and down more often and your scores will drop.